when I say being a man, it's so hard. It's like now I'm bringing my, I got my woman trusting me, my daughter trusting me, my kids trusting me, and I'm I'm having them follow me. And it's like, man, I just hope it's the right way. I hope I'm not doing the wrong thing. But then on top of that, right? Take a peep at this. I'm a man. So it's a certain level of confidence that I should exude. Right? So I can't really express that because then I look like I'm second guessing. And now, like, my my woman, like, I need my yeah. woman to trust me. And when you're not, when you don't walk in that confidence and, 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 and you're second guessing yourself, it's hard for a woman to trust you and for, for, for you to lead. Man. That's a hard position to be in. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's true. That's bro. real. I ain't even, I ain't never want to say that. But because yeah. it's like, that's a different level of vulnerability that for me to, I mean, it is what it is. But yeah. Yeah. Yo, you know the vibes, man. Gemini Scorpio podcast episode. Where we at? 81. You've been cheating, but it's cool. How I've been cheating? Oh, Nobody, nah. Nobody's telling me anything. Uh, it's cool. It's cool. Episode 81. We got to build a Gemini Scorpio podcast. Uh, yeah. What's your name? She Sade. She Sade. We're going to just walk around. What if people just walked around calling you your Instagram name all day? She. Hey, and, She Sade. And she is. What's your name, man? Sade. Sade is in the building. Jay Hill, I'm in the building. That's actually my name. Yeah, it's my daughter's name too. It is. Yeah, so <laughs> Jay Hill, I'm here. Sade, she's here. Gemini Scorpio Podcast, episode 081. Look at us now. Look at us. Look at us now. We consistent. It's our third episode back. Yes. How you feeling? Consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Consistent is, is the vibe. It's, it's it's not easy. It's not. People don't talk about that side. So yeah, facts. It's like, just be consistent. Just be consistent. Not that consistency is hard as hell. Nah, facts. I like your glasses. Thank you. Yeah. It's nighttime. I can't put them on right now. But... You can't put them on? Mm -mm. You know, that was people, for earlier. People be wearing glasses in the nighttime. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, this is like, it's kind of nostalgic because I think, I guess, what, 40 episodes, uh, Prior, right? We were in Maryland. Right. Episode 40. We was, mm -hmm. it was COVID times. We was mm -hmm. like really getting in the swing of things on episode 40. I feel right. Like, I feel like you're like a, a veteran podcaster now at this point. I am a veteran podcaster. Yeah, I took a, like I, I took a hiatus, but I'm definitely a veteran podcaster. How you feel? Like, you, do you do you feel like, um, I mean, of course, just watching uh, podcasts grow over these uh, past couple of years, do you feel like you kind of dropped the ball a little bit or you wish that you would have kept going? Uh, for sure. I, I'm not even going to lie about that. Like, I definitely feel like uh, I sat out at the wrong time mm. because we really had a very hot streak going and it Facts. was getting crazy. Mm -hmm. And, like, as soon as it got hot, like, you know what I'm saying, I kind of sat down. Things happen. Um, but, in, but we still had a great run. It's just that... It wasn't the time to stop, you know? And I feel like, truthfully, I feel like when we started, that's when podcasts, that was before podcasts is what podcasts is even now. Podcasts, not that we didn't invent podcasts or anything like that, but there was far less podcasts. Like, I mean, by a long slide. By a long slide. When we were going at such a heavy pace, like there was nearly not as many um podcast now i feel like there's so so many that it almost does and can feel saturated a little bit however you know some you know some people just got that shit you can't teach no, you know thanks. so it is what it is but yeah definitely sometimes i look back on it, i'm like damn niggas would have just kept doing yeah. was doing but we, we still been. got time baby yeah look it ain't us. no rush it ain't yeah. no pressure even still like think about it to, to to be 80 episodes in yeah with a podcast in general that means yeah. like we still i was just telling uh kyron and um dylan which, oh yeah shout out to the gang they here yeah. kyron here dylan here my guy aaron is here a rod mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying he's in the building um, but uh, okay? yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> but just to have 80 episodes in general, we have people that really support us. Mm -hmm. I um, I was just telling uh, Kyron and Dylan that like we can drop an episode just audio and still do pretty well. And I'm like, yeah, that's, true. that's really like I that's something that I'm really proud yeah. of when it comes to uh, our podcast because yeah. it's so hard to mm -hmm. like to build an audio following. Mm -hmm. It's so hard, and I and I, I think people just. You know, people see people YouTube numbers and they be like, oh my God. And they don't even understand. Like, even some, like, a hundred views is a lot of views. Mm. People don't, I remember one time I got a hundred views. I was like, eh. but like, to get a hundred people to watch something, let alone migrate, <clears throat> that's impact. 
You know yep. what I mean? And we, we're past that, obviously. But, like, I just remember when we started, when we was like, I can't wait when we get 100 views. Yep. Then it was, let's get to five. two. Yeah, it yeah, was like 250. Like, yep. Then it was like five. Then it was like, all we got to do is get to 1,000. Then it went to 1,000. Let's get to 2,000, you know? And it's just like, people don't understand how much impact that is to mm. get even that many people to migrate from a platform to another platform to watch you, yeah. to hear you. You know what I mean? It's not easy. It's really yeah. not easy. So it's definitely a blessing, man. But yeah. I'm um, I'm glad we was able to build it together. Yeah, for sure. Right, because like that's it was awesome. It was a great time, yeah. honestly. Yeah, and it's still a great time, and it's more to come. Um, and you know, if you know, for those who watched our journey over since episode one, two, three, four, five, six, all of that, it's crazy because we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to Yo, eighty. Yo, look Insane. how it look now compared yeah. to our first. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that was. But crazy. it's crazy because even then, like. Yeah. We still had some type of standard. Yeah, it's yeah. as it's wild as as, cr- as and it, and it was getting crazy. It was getting so good even then. Like we had we we was one of the ones with the the three angles. Like yeah, yep. like everybody didn't start out doing no three angles. Yeah. Like you know we was on three angles. Three. I remember you was like, no, we need more than one angle. We need the two mm-hmm. angle. Then went to four angle. It, yeah. it was in the middle shot. It was getting crazy. Nah, so facts. Lighting everything. So nah. it's a blessing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I definitely, I don't feel like no Ricky podcaster, if that's what you ask, yeah. Yeah, you, like, you, you also are. And then also, I'm not like a, um, I'm not like a timid podcaster either, either. like, I think, like, I, like, this is what I, you know, this is what mm-hmm. we do. Like, this is what we came in doing, like, so it's not like uh it doesn't feel odd. Yeah. We like, awkward. um, just speaking of, like, just, of course, Growing a podcast, uh, being consistent at things. I think mm-hmm. we were like a month and a half in now. Alani. I know. Yeah. Choo-choo. Talk to me. Um, You know, uh, we always hear about, uh, we talked about pregnancy a little yeah. bit uh, two, two, two episodes ago. Uh, abs- yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Two and, episodes um, ago. But I don't think we we talked about like postpartum. And I, I know mm-hmm. at one point you, you were saying like you don't really do postpartum with depression, but mm-hmm. you was also saying like different parts of postpartum people right. don't talk about. Right. Well, like I don't feel like I've encountered postpartum depression, Mm -hmm. but I think there's like a confusion because every time I hear people like talk about postpartum, it's always attached to depression. So they're like, I'm going through postpartum depression. I'm going through postpartum depression. But postpartum is already a period Mm. after pregnancy, like after you deliver. Right. I believe it's up to 12 weeks. That's your postpartum stage considered fourth trimester newborn stage. Right. But I think there's already a level of hormonal balancing that's going on inside of that postpartum stage where your hormones are kind of trying to get back to normal. Um, your body's healing and getting back to normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and your hormones are also adjusting to your baby, especially if you're like breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but and it comes with certain levels of moods and, you know, things like that. But I think because people... Uh, the moods are heightened a lot of times, they automatically say it's postpartum depression. It's weird. Like, every time I heard about postpartum, like, and it's crazy because obviously I had my first child at 18, so a lot of these terms and things like that wasn't as popular towards me or things that I was speaking on back then because I just wasn't as familiar with them. Um, But as being a grown adult, like, every time I heard of, I never heard postpartum by itself. It was like I always hear postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And I think um, many women do go through postpartum depression, but I think also many women are also just going through postpartum. Like, you know what I mean? And it's not a, it's not minimizing it or belittling it. It's just more so giving grace to it. Like, it it doesn't have to be depression because it's postpartum, if that makes sense. It's just your healing period. And healing looks many different ways, basically. So I personally, I don't identify with postpartum depression. Um, I don't feel like I've identified any traits of that sort, but I am going through postpartum. Um, which comes with like a, like we've talked before, like a lack of sleep, Um, you know, probably eating habits a little all over the place, you know, things don't get done all the time, but I'm also giving myself time to get in the swing of things and grow my baby and get back to normal without putting so much pressure on myself and give myself a lot of grace through that period. So, you you know what I thought was interesting about the uh, post, well, the start of the postpartum Mm -hmm. journey for you, you were saying that, um, you know, usually women, they, they have their baby to get back in the gym. And yeah. you like you wanted to wait six weeks My full first. six weeks. Yeah, to just arrest. Yeah, I just, yeah, I don't want to force myself. Like, I especially because, like, g- the gym has always been somewhat of a part of a lifestyle for me. Like, mm-hmm. I either either I had a trainer or I would go to the gym. Like, I never was too far off. I might sit out a little bit, but I'm always back in the, in the gym. And I felt like 
I ain't really like I wasn't rushing like I'm not rushing to nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna enjoy my baby and give myself healing time. Mm-hmm. You know, cause realistically, I did feel like did feel very weak, like at the start of Yo, but yeah, cause like wait, I, you went through a lot though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, the yeah. whole like yeah, my whole labor process. For, yeah, for, what, a, a week. Yeah, bro, that was really that labor. That labor process was brutal. Bro, like, like, no lie. I don't even know. I don't know mm-hmm. if anybody else. I like. I don't know nobody that went through that because we well, went on Sunday. Yeah, they induced us yeah. right. Then we left because we was in there for hours. like sixteen hours. Yeah, they didn't have no room for us. Did just to go back. Yeah, and they still didn't have any room for us. So oh. basically delayed induction, like continuously inducing us and delaying it. And then you was in labor for like And then I was still, in labor for three days. Yeah. <laughs> Actual active labor bro, for three days in the hospital. Bro. It was exhausting. It was a lot. And I think that's a lot of reason why I chose to like, like I'm not jump rushing to the gym. I, like I want my body to rest and they give myself all the grace that I need to just rest. Let my body just do it. Because I felt like my body underwent. Excuse me, underwent. My, my body... Un- went through a yeah. lot of things yeah. and you know even things that i wasn't even prepared for like I, you know what i'm saying it was the first time i think i've ever even heard of postpartum uh, uh not postpartum um when i went into the chills yeah yo i've yeah, never heard anything like that but i like literally was in labor and i was busting out into like i like i was freezing and i was like shivering like teeth chattering like i couldn't control it like it was just so much that was going on. Like I, like I, and I just remember looking at Jay. Like I, like I felt so defeated, and I think because of all of my body was experiencing, like my, uh, my uh, fever went up to like hundred and four. Mm. My blood pressure went up. It was, it was, it was, it was a scary. Lot. It was a scary space yo, to be. Yeah, it, remember and then we, yo, it was, a, it was crazy. Yeah. like that whole experience was crazy. Like yeah, it I'm, was, bro. It was, and, and I and couldn't just, even think. Yeah, I'm sorry. like I, mm-hmm. I, like just being honest, I don't know. You was complimenting me about this, but like just being real, like I couldn't even imagine you had like people been going through that alone by yourself, yeah. or just not just what me without yeah. like just me not being there. Like mm-hmm. I um like we see this whole thing with uh Blueface and, and Krishan Rock, mm-hmm. and I feel like I don't know. I just feel like I I couldn't not be there for your yeah. pregnancy. That's type crazy. Yeah, and I think it's just important to have somebody there who's advocating for you. Dylan, can you um or Aaron, can one of y'all get the door for Los? My God, Los is in the building from Baltimore, but oh, that's dope. Go ahead. Uh, I remember Los. You mm-hmm. remember Los? Yeah, I think so. He used to do your like flyers or something like yep. or pictures or something. And he uh he, he's doing a lot of great stuff with um with Jess now. So oh that oh that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't, yeah he's just right here though. Yeah. So um, um but yo I could not imagine. What do you think about that though? The whole blue face not being a I feel like that whole shit is crazy anyway. The whole thing is crazy. I think that um I think you just got it. I think childbirth is such a delicate s- situation and again like th- so much of this I'm relearning like being an adult and I think it's so delicate to be going through labor, birth, pregnancy with like you just really have to pick the right person. Like mm-hmm. you really do. You have to make sure the person really has your back because, like I said, like I couldn't imagine you not being there to advocate for me because it was periods of time where I was so defeated that I don't think I could even ask or kind of see or figure out what was going on because mm-hmm. I just like I was tired. I was defeated. I couldn't do it. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? They hated Somebody, me too. Yeah, because like, you were Yo. asking <laughs> questions. You were on top of it. Right. Like, what's that? What's going on? Why is that? No, I'll move this. Like, you know, and they probably were annoyed, but you need people to advocate for you, especially black women specifically. No, when, facts. you know, so much of our health is at risk in hospitals. You know what I mean? And it's sad because that was literally, uh, I was, up, that brother? was uh, predominantly a black hospital. But child, I, I, that's a whole nother story for another yeah. day. <laughs> can we get a man a chair or can we like move that or we can get him a chair from outside or something? Or we can move that stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. My guy Los is in the building. What up, brother? How you feeling, man? Give me some love, man. How you feeling? Yeah, How you doing? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Um, but um, yeah, babe. I'm like, I like getting back to it. Sorry to cut you off. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if like how. Yeah. I can't even. Ima- I, that's what I'm saying. I can't even see you there without yeah. me. Yeah. Even crazy. if your family was there. Yeah, like it. Honestly. I don't know, like, I was telling you, like, even when I was thinking about when I had my daughter at 18, like, I was like, God himself must have been, like, giving me strength to push through that. Because I just don't even, I can't, I can't think 
to be in that space without you there because mm. it's like what do you like what do you do like you know without yeah. so, you're somebody who really understands what's going on to advocate who's been there through the whole pregnancy to know what's going on this that and third etc so it was a lot it was, yo, a, it was and, a lot and even like like just think about the blue face and Krishan shit I feel like yo I don't even it's like why is this the stuff we're like condoning or promoting I get like it, I, I just don't yeah. understand because it's like it's some kids out there. I think I, I just I just think we got to be careful yeah. of the stuff that mm-hmm. we're like spreading, spreading right, yeah. and promoting on, on social media because it's like it's kids out there who looking up to this thinking yeah. that that's cool. But to be honest, Jay, like a lot of what Christian and Blueface is going through is very common. Mm. Like to be honest, it's not like it's things that you don't see in the hood every nah, day. Maybe you're right. I like this ain't the first. Deadbeat baby daddy story there you know uh bash your baby mother um girl having baby by man who don't want it this is not the first story it is so what it is is i agree with you like the spreading of it and you know that's just the blogs being nasty and you know that's what they do but outside of the blogs just even like for, as a man right mm-hmm. i don't see me like it's just a bunch of corny shit. i'm gonna just it keep is, it all of course, her. like 100%. even like talking about Putting your your baby moms on yeah. Instagram, asking what a kid gonna be yeah. like in a back room type. Like yeah. I feel like that's corny. Like it is. Like, it's very corny. Even if me and my 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 mother, my child is not doing well, mm-hmm. like it's certain shit you just don't do as a stand up yeah. dude. You feel me? Like, and I just feel like I don't. Know, that should be corny. No, like, I definitely uh. think it's corny. But I don't. I, I I really. I don't believe people are like on his side. I think it is what it is. You know, just a level of. Um, entertainment unfortunately that's being spread but i don't think people condone condone it now there is like i don't want to call them young boys but like you know gen zers and shit that might see that that think it's you know cool and okay but i also think those are the same boys who would be that way anyway just due to the type of parenting they may have because mm. i just don't see anybody who is brought up in the with the right upbringing doing that you know what i'm trying to say like I, you know what's funny I don't, I don't see none of my friends allowing me to do that yeah. like without checking me now yeah, i don't know it's that means so. you have a great circle of friends yeah. but a lot of uh, some people don't i'm not gonna say a lot some people don't like they really just don't yo it's crazy because even like it's just that the whole child thing it's just it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's hard it's delicate like and you know and even watching it you know i feel i i it it's definitely sad to watch simply because a child is involved too like mm. you know what i mean and already children are involved because Krishana's young. She's yeah, a fact. kid. Yeah. Like, she's not a kid. She's grown, no, but yeah. that's a baby. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? When I even think about who I was at 21, 22, 23, I was a baby doing a lot of baby dumb shit. Mm. So it's like, it's already heartbreaking to watch somebody so young be in a situation that she has to learn the hard way through. Or even him. Like, I'll even give him, I'm not giving him no grace or no benefit of the doubt, but I'm just giving him the young going through this dumb shit. Because you're going to look back on this and like, like what the fuck? Like you know, when you when you ha- hopefully when you have whatever transition wake up call that you have through life, because we all get them, whether it be through death of close friends, close family members, or a rebirth of some yeah. kind, we all go through not that transformation. That nobody, yeah, not sure. wishing it, but you know, sometimes that's the only people way people learn, and that's the only way God get people attention. Right? Mm. When you go back and you look back on it, and it's like, damn, that, like that's how I treat them. Like when my kid goes back and search the internet, this is what my kid gonna see: mm. me dealing with his mother, me dealing with you know, what I'm saying him and how I talked about him and how I was. You know what I mean? It's just not okay. And the same thing for Krishana, but you know. You know, the thing I don't like about it is just being honest, because like even we had these conversations early on in the pregnancy, or like later on in the pregnancy, but it's so many, and I'm not to make this a woman versus man thing, yeah. but it's so many men out there who's fighting to be in their child's, their kids' lives, mm-hmm. and women aren't allowing that. Right, like it's it's so many of those, those situations Agreed. that's out there Agreed. to see somebody playing with it like that's like bro, yeah. it's people who would literally die to to, be. to be in the hospital mm-hmm. with their with their um baby mother right. or that child. Forget yeah. the the relationship with their baby; they don't even care about yeah. that. Just to be in the presence of that kid, mm-hmm. and like we've seen like people just in general. Mm-hmm. I want to say what like people can be really wicked, wicked, right, mm-hmm. and shysty and just like vindictive, mm-hmm. and they and they play them games where like they they hold the kid yeah. against you, so. You feel me, yeah. like, and it's like to see somebody playing around with that. It's just like, I, again, like I don't know, like I ain't here to, right? It ain't really in my benefit, but it's just like I look at it it's like, bro, yeah. this is corny. Uh, but well, I think it's important that you say that too because there's a lot of young men who look up to you that need to also hear that somebody has an opinion on it because I feel like sometimes people like 
shy off from touching on certain topics because they don't want to, especially like popular and yeah, yeah, yeah. friends of celebrities or in the realm no, of, is. you know, those spaces, right? They don't want to touch on it. They don't want to talk because they, a lot of times it's saving face. Like yeah. you don't never know when you're going to bump shoulders with such and such. So you don't want to speak on such and such. But I think it does take real men and stand up men to give an opinion on it so that the men that are looking up to y'all always understand that this is never okay under any circumstance. Mm. You know what I mean? So, but that even that is like it's sad because it's just I don't, know, I don't want to keep saying a word of it, man. Mm-hmm. I don't want to keep complaining about the world, but it's just like the world. It's just it's, it's really a fucked up place, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about like just our spiritual side and mm-hmm. just getting close to God. But it's just like it's so messed up that the world we live in that that people like that somebody can just take somebody's life at, at will if they want to, mm-hmm. right? I say that to say, like even with me calling out somebody, we should be able to like as men. It was a, I feel like it was a point where you can call somebody corny that like that don't mean that you disrespect them or that mean like I can say uh, act as corny and that can be like that's my opinion yeah you feel, well not even an opinion like you mm-hmm. I feel like we need more of that men mm-hmm. if I do something corny hold me accountable as a man Tell like yo Jay is. don't do that that's that's not cool you know what I'm saying <laughs> and me not take it offensive and want to fight you or kill you because you told me that I was being corny like if anything I should be like yo you know what bro my bad you helped me. How had to wake me up because I was on, yeah. I was asleep. You feel me? I was mentally asleep. And I think even like outside of killing and hurting each other, like people are doing taking opportunities to air people out, like try to like bu- cyber bully them in a mm. sense. Like if if they don't like something they said, was something common that I'm seeing on social media is that if somebody don't like something you said or insinuated about them, they'll go consider themselves like airing your business out, like finding like any like oh, like, like this oh, you the Twitter this you. Like, yeah, That's like, oh, T, like, get you canceled yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. little stuff that, like, messes with your money, mm-hmm. like, whatever, because you don't condone something yeah, they do or, or not. Agree with them. Yeah, or Shit, you what? don't agree with them. But, yeah. yeah, speaking of, like, just the world being wicked, right, we, um, matter of fact, did you finish your postpartum? I, I ain't want to, like, cut yeah, you Yeah, I mean, no, I, for the most part, like I said, like, you know, I just, I forgot where we, I actually forgot where we left off. We were just talking about postpartum. Yeah. I, I know you were saying, like, people, some people go through postpartum depression. Yeah. But it's actually two different things. You have postpartum, which everyone goes yeah. through. Yep. And then yep. you have postpartum, postpartum depression. depression. Yeah, and I just, I, I think we were just touching base on it just to properly identify with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm definitely big on not self-diagnosing yourself, but I'm also definitely big on getting help where you need help. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing why a lot of people do fall into a lot of postpartum depression is like, is like lack of support, mm. you know, or uh, triggering support. You know, and people not really giving them the aid and the relief they need, you know. So we've been doing a lot of this lately, babe. And yeah. I'm not trying to make it so boring, but I just, I gotta commend you because for the listeners, for the day ones, right? They know how far we came. Facts. But I definitely want to give you your, uh, your kudos and um, your props for like communicating more because you were saying like it's from lack of support and lack mm-hmm. of this and that, and I'm thinking shit, lack of communication. Mm-hmm. And we like not too long ago, we got in a. It was a little back and forth. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a real argument. And I, you had came back like, yo, my bad. I was just, um, I was just flushed. I was just frustrated. I ain't mm-hmm. eat all day. I ain't do this. And I'm like, damn, like, yo, that yeah. will get the best of anybody. You feel yeah. me? So definitely I understand. But the fact that you was able to even acknowledge that and stop and not allow that to like mess up the entire week. Cause mm-hmm. I remember it was a time where I'd be like, you'll get upset it'd be the whole yeah. week. But like, you was like, yo, my oh, bad. Month. Yeah. Month nah, facts. So I like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's just some, um, that's just things I work on with myself, but I like I I will say like in postpartum that's hard because mm. like I said you remember when to we, we, we talked about like last episode like reading a room mm-hmm. with your partner I think that that stage of postpartum we definitely are looking for our loved ones to read the room mm. and I can say that like not necessarily from you but I've expected it from like my mom and you know my family to read the room with me you know what I'm mm. saying I just had a baby don't expect nothing of me don't expect me to host you don't expect me if you want to come. Come over, help, make a meal, do a load of laundry. You know what I mean? I just carried a baby for 40 weeks. You know, went through a week at the hospital, three days of labor. I could count, I could count them down by the second. You know, come and show up for me because, mm. you know, don't let me ask you because read the room. And I feel like, and that's where I kind of told you that sometimes your loved ones just don't read the room with you. Mm. Um, and it can cause that feeling underappreciated, not getting enough reassurance. And I think in postpartum stage is a really delicate stage. Um, because it's again, our hormones are balancing and are trying to rebalance out after we just groomed a baby. You know mm. what I mean? So it's like to expect me to communicate and overly 
do things for your need is not yours, but in no, general, yeah, I get it. is it's kind of I just think it's a little unfair to expect that from somebody in such a sensitive stage. That's like asking somebody, like you know, sometimes people be mourning death, and sometimes they'll they'll be frustrated or cry, or whatever. But you can understand their mourning. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all, are you know, you're mourning a death. Like I, I don't expect you to be understanding to me telling you things are going to be okay right now, or me telling you like just you know you got to get up and go to work, and you're like I don't want to do that. Like you know, I can't expect you because you're mourning a death. It's 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 no different than just a delicate time in somebody's life. Like, and I think people should show up for people more through that stage. That's all. I want to ask a really, 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 really tough question. But and I'm trying to tread lightly with this, okay. right? Okay. Everyone grieves differently, of course. Of course. We had this similar conversation about being on a period. Mm -hmm. And I feel like... It's hard to say because I'm a man. Right. But I'm going to just say it straight. How do we separate or differentiate? Or how are we able to... If you could be honest with me for mm -hmm. a second, be transparent with me. How are we able to... To recognize or spot out when a woman is... Weaponizing mm. her emotions right because even if it's through mm -hmm. postpartum because like as a, as a man like you should be able to like grieve however you yeah, grieve right? right right but sometimes i feel like sometimes women can do certain things because they can manipulate a situation mm -hmm. i know i'm going through this postpartum mm -hmm. stage so i can use this for my benefit i can act out i can do this and be like and i can yeah. blame it on postpartum mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily mm -hmm. fair for not only the man for the for the relationship though mm -hmm. No, I mean, I agree. Like, I definitely think, like, I, I think that's just a spirit of discern discernment, though, because I don't really, I will hope women aren't just out here weaponizing those, you know, those stages, even though I know that there's some women that do. You know what I'm saying? But I can't really speak to every woman. I can just only say that at the end of the day, when it comes to, like, period, because period is, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's a smaller, lighter version of those same hormonal dosages that we get through pregnancy, postpartum, all that. Like, right, we still go through that hormonal change. That's a big change, body change through every month. Uh, I do think it is, in those months, it is a woman's duty to know how to regulate your emotions and your cycle because you get this every month. So you should know how to regulate through your cycles. But I'll be honest, like, to be honest, Jay, a lot of women are don't know how to... Um, emotionally manage you mm. know what i'm trying to say and i think like there's women who are good at it but there's still women who are learning learning at it and me somebody who learned how who's learned and still learning how to emotionally manage my all my emotions it took me a long time to do that and also vocalize my needs through that you know what i mean mm. so that's not your fault however i do think it's just work that women do need to do a little more of um pregnancy though it's really hard to control. You know what I mean? I'm just being honest. But if you, I will say spirit discernment, because if you already deal with an emotionally unstable woman, and I don't mean like crazy how men call it, oh, you're emotionally unstable. They use the word unstable. I mean, no, women really don't know how to manage. Some women really don't know how to manage their emotions. Just like men, you were never taught. A lot of us mm. wasn't taught as kids. We get it, you know, we cry, shut up. What you crying for? Not like, what's wrong? Let's talk about this. Tell me you have these big emotions. Let's talk about it. Like from when we're toddlers, you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. That's how you learn to manage your emotions anyway. From when you're really, really, really little, you allow kids to have those big, big emotions because we all have them. Mm. When they're frustrated, they ball their fist up, they're turning red, they're screaming, they're falling out. They're not just throwing tantrums. They're actually just having big emotions that they don't know how to manage, right? When they're not taught to manage it properly, later in life, we just come bit, become big adults that's doing the same thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We throwing tantrums. We mad. We breaking shit. We cussing people loud. We, I hate you. Fuck you. Da, 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 da. Lack of emo, like managing your emotions, right? Mm. So a lot of people still struggle with that. Women and men. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, pregnancy is hard to balance because it's such a surge of hormones that are pumping through your blood, like it's you. If you already d did pour with it, you're gonna do pour with it. Mm. Uh, you know, I think it's definitely best to get some prenatal counseling and postnatal counseling. You know, you know, what I'm saying through that process, especially if you're in a relationship with somebody. And I think that, you know, couples, if you're already together, then you know your partner. You know how you know how well they manage those emotions. Sometimes somebody got to be the bigger person. Like, not to say you might want to, you may not. But, like, if you're a man and you know you deal with a woman who has those issues and she becomes pregnant, you might want to take the lead and be like, yo, let's go get some prenatal counseling mm. before we hit spots that we can't get out of. Um, 
you know, et cetera. But it's not an excuse. It's not, okay. I don't think they should ever weaponize it. I think that, again, you have to sp spot and be able to get help for these things. Like, it's not like a, a one answer fit all. You know, I think so, dealing with it a little bit uh, way better than even the old period emotions. Great. It's been, it's, I'm man, screaming. Whatever. <laughs> but I think. You know how they say, like, men say, like, you got to treat your woman like your, your, your child. Yeah. Like, treat her with a certain type yeah. of care. I understand that. But also, I think, same way when I say I was able to love you, when I was able to um, accept you for you. Mm -hmm. Same with this, same way with this con conversation, right? And, again, I'm not trying to sound like super cliche or this super guy that's got it got it all together. But I think what helped me was when I accepted you for you. Right. So I knew that instead of trying to control the situation or because I didn't like it, yeah. trying to... I don't know, talk you out of being you. Sometimes, well, now I learn how to just, sometimes a lot, yeah. a lot of times now, but better than before. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I learned how to just accept that for being you and not take it personal. Like, okay, I understand when she gets upset, when she gets flustered, she just does this, right? Or she does that. Allow her to have that moment without critiquing her or telling her what she did wrong, right? Even if I don't agree with it, just like last time, right? Because mm -hmm. you came back, I think the same day, like, yo, I apologize, da, da, da. Right, I ain't have to try to beat it down. Yeah, right. cool. You feel me? And I feel like that. Some people could say take the high road, or I don't know, but it's just it's not about. That's that's why I want people to understand when in relationships it ain't about you versus me or right. this person versus that person. It's about the team. Yeah. So you got to do whatever. It's the angle. Exactly. You got to do what what you got to do to help the team win. Right. You get what I'm saying? So like, if 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 she's upset, I don't know whatever mm -hmm. she's going through. What she's going through. Let's hypothetically, she's not in her right mind. Right. Right. Let's look at it like that. If she's not in her right mind, but you in your right mind, you can make a decision to help both of y'all. Right. And I think that's how it got to go. But I just feel like a lot of times, you know, just growing up, for sure, we never was taught how to how to manage our emotions. Right. We didn't we have no balance in our life, let alone our emotions. So when something's not going our, our way, mm -hmm. it's like, man, nah, you can't disrespect me like that. Because mm -hmm. da, 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 and it's like, bro, like, it's probably not even that, yeah. directed to you. It's just the, the emotions it's misdirected emotions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just got to learn how to uh, cope with it. You right. get what I'm saying? Not cope with it, just deal with like, it. Like, I think we talked about this last episode, maybe, or two episodes ago. Like, you know, again, like, everybody's human at the mm -hmm. end of the day. And a lot of times we're first in line to our partners when we are going through whatever. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially, like, big situations, you know. We're still first in line. So sometimes it's just not going to always come off as pleasant mm -hmm. to the other person, whether we are intentionally doing it or unintentionally like you may i may be having a rough day and you like how how was your dad i'm like it was cool i'm not mad at you yeah. but it was just it, it was annoying like right. my, my my point my answer is really just thinking about the day like i fucking actually hated this day i'm answering you and it's kind of like damn what did i do yeah. like why are you mad at me like you know what i'm saying but it's like i'm not even mad at you you know what i'm saying but the way I responded isn't really ideally the way you would like me to respond in the second. So it might make you feel the way, you know what I'm saying? But it happens. But like you said, instead of like two people. Both losing. You know it. what if I mean? Going back and can, forth. Yeah. Right. Somebody has to be like, you know what? You know what I'm saying? I could see that you didn't have a good day. Um, is there something I could do? We were just talking about that, the 80-20 rule, right? Yeah. Like that's, it reminds me of that. Like every shit sometimes i got a whole mind to the 80 right i think i'm saying it right mm -hmm. dylan but uh but I, he made a different and i think a different point what'd you say it? how you say basically like you, you might be with somebody that has 80 percent of what you mm -hmm. need mm. and you might you might honor that just for 20 percent somewhere else right, right. Yeah, yeah but i get what you're saying yeah. you're just saying sometimes time, it might not it's not that like a michelle obama said Marriages, relationships are not always 50-50. Yeah. Sometimes somebody's carrying 70% of it. Exactly. Sometimes somebody's carrying 30% of it. It will switch. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes somebody has to carry 80, 100, whatever. You know? And that's just, you know. Nah, facts. Yo, you know what's crazy, babe? Um, we wanted to talk about this, uh, like this spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how we go into this conversation, man. Because, like, first of all, we've been going to church. Right. How you feel? I feel good about it. You feel good about it? Yeah. Yo, you know, it's, it's uh, again. Well, I, well I, we're going to a different church. So, yeah. you know, obviously. But I think that so, my angle is still the same on. So let me go. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Again, I'm not trying to see like this guy that's so taking. Funny. 
like I don't know, like I don't want to say complaining, but like being so sorry or whatever like that. I so feel sorry. like no, what's the, I don't know the word. Like I don't know the word. Whatever, forget it. But yo, I don't under I don't think people understand how hard it is to be a man. Okay. I say that because like everything when it comes to like leading your mm-hmm. your, your your family, mm-hmm. like everything is on you. So I say to say like even like this 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 new experience we're doing with going to church right. is really different from what we're used to. Like I mean, like it's still Christianity, right? Right. But we're being introduced to some new things that we probably would never, never yeah. go for. You know what I'm saying? Espe- true. Like especially our parents, right? Oh, our parents ain't even trying here. What the fuck we got? To exactly. So <laughs> like, this. yeah. I, I went. I went first, right? And like I kind like kind of I came to Atlanta first. I got situated, brought the fam. Same with church. It's like I can't. Mm-hmm. I went to church first, make sure everything good. Brought the fam. Brought the fam. Yep. And like, yo, and I don't want to say this because I know some some uh, believers and Christians think I'm like I'm not a real believer, but whatever. I'm still learning. But just being honest, like walking in by faith is so hard because at the end of the day, I think faith is knowing. If I had to be real, right? I think faith is knowing for you, and like sometimes. I'm not gonna lie, like it's my first time saying this, like it's like, man, I just wanna make sure. I think I told you this, like, I just wanna make sure I'm doing the right thing, praising the right God, doing like just just doing the right by the right. But it's so many different denominations, so right. many, it's so many different things. It's like, man, I just hope that I'm praying to the right man mm-hmm. or the right person so yeah. we can get to. And then I say that I, I bring it this full circle. When I say being a man is so hard, it's like now I'm bringing my I got my woman trusting me. My daughter trusting me, my kids trusting me, and I'm I'm having them follow me, and it's like, man, I just hope it's the right way. I hope I'm not doing the wrong thing. But then on top of that, right? Take a peep at this. I'm a man, so it's a certain level of confidence that I should exude, right? So I can't really express that because then I look like I'm second guessing, and now like my my woman, like I need my yeah. woman to trust me, and when you're not. When you don't you're walk in that confidence and, and 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 you second guessing yourself, it's hard for a woman to trust you and for 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 you to lead. Man, that's a hard position to be in. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's true. That's bro. real. I ain't even I ain't never want to say that, but because yeah. it's like that's a different level of vulnerability that for me that I, I mean it is what it is. But yeah, yeah. Oh well, I'm glad you got to say that out loud. Yeah. So how you're was doing a great job? Thanks. How was the experience? The um, experience for you? So like I said, like so obviously like you went first and you were you came back in. You, you were talking about the church a lot. You were taking a lot of notes and from your Bible studies. You were going to Bible study. You were, you know, doing, you know, doing your thing with, you know, just checking it out, going through the Bible, making sure what's what. And you continuously kept talking about it, but you continuously kept going for the knowledge. Thanks. And I thought anybody who's eager to learn, you know what I mean? It like... Is I will follow because at the end of the day, you're lo- you're looking for the truth. You're mm. looking for the answer. So whether it lands here or lands somewhere else, you're still looking for the truth, right? Like so at the end of the day, you can't go wrong with that because you're always searching for the answer. Mm. So when it comes to, I guess, like being uncertain about where you're going, you're always on the way because mm. you're looking for the truth. Mm. Like, you know, so no point intended because you know <laughs> yeah, but, um, but none the, we none walked the, into the truth guys. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless um, for me like I said I think you know Jay you've you've always made pretty sound decisions and mm. that's something I could trust you know we've been together for a long time um, there's never really been a time where I can honestly say that you've made wrong decisions you make mistakes like everybody else when it comes to you know, life, like we have like, like, damn it, you know what I'm saying? Cool, whatever. But when it comes to like big decisions, you normally have always done the right thing and chosen the right path. It wasn't hard for me to go to the church and to give it a try, especially because I seen you were fully indulging in it and you liked it. You also took your time. You didn't fully like, you yeah, know, took, commit to it until time, you, sure. you know, fully was like, let me get it a try. So once you were serious and you went enough times, I was like, let me give it a try because that's something you're interested in. And I think as a partner... It's just important to try things your partner's interested in. Mm. Like, I think that you don't have to fully even like everything your partner like. But I think if you if you care about your partner and they're interested in something, you go see with them. You go check it out. Or you you at least go. You see how you like it. You know, I was going to church, obviously, in Maryland as well. You know, I had my church that I liked and my favorite pastor or whatever. So trying the church was completely new to me because they do things completely different than the church that I was used to going to. But... 
Um, there's nothing wrong with the church, though. Mm. Like, you know, every, everybody's super welcoming. The church is very welcoming. The word and the scripture that they preach is straight from the Bible. Mm. It's not, you know, anything alarming. You know what I mean? They just do it a different way. But so does a lot of churches. Let me ask you, let me ask you that, though. Yeah. Going to this church, right, mm -hmm. this particular church that we go to, isn't it crazy how it kind of opened our eyes to mm -hmm. how this new society of churches are operating and like For sure. it's very much if, just looking at it, and i didn't pay it no mind until i mean i didn't really pay it a t pay attention to it until mm -hmm. i got to this church how our church is super motivation heavy now it's like yeah. not really a lot of the like preachers I, are not coming from the bible anymore it's it's, it's, it's a lot of things that's like, like motivating uh, you advice like they're like um relationship coaches almost yeah. it's like uh fine like, it's like and, and it's cool like i like them it feel good yeah, yeah. because it, it's but, but is it's, it not it's not coming from the word though it's not it's less teaching of the actual bible and more motivational speeches yeah you know what i'm saying and i don't know if they're doing it to get you into the church or doing it because that's what people want to hear. People, some people don't want to hear Bible verses and actual study from the Bible. They rather hear it in a way where they're like, you got to get up in the morning. Let's do, you know, like a, like a, almost like a, a ICDCU college commercial. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I, I know that was crazy to that say, but wild. like, I'm sorry, but it's like, you know, get off your ass. You got to get off the bed, get your butt in school. Like, you know what I mean? And it's almost like a, you know, I do got to do that. I do got to do that. But in hindsight, it's taking away some of the teaching from the Bible. You know what I mean? Because, Teach me directly. You you teach me the word because that's and, what we're supposed to go to church to do anyway. And, and what happened? And that's not no bash to any church because you know you already know my favorite pastor and I don't you know what I'm saying I don't play. I I I adore that. However, you know I don't know what what well, on spiritual spirituality people are, but I do know that the word is supposed to come straight from you're, God, you're which is in the Bible. To, exactly. I think though it's crazy because another side of it is people are getting so motivational that you know public speaking is a skill of right? course and if you think about it, like you look at these mega churches i mm -hmm. think i've seen this on a podcast but um they was just saying how pe it's like people are putting so much work into being a great public speaker that again that one they're getting away from the bible right and two that it could almost be like manipulating you to come to my church okay. and three it can be a detriment to the local churches because yeah. what happened is your local pastor might not be as good of a speaker mm -hmm. or as good mm -hmm. as being mm -hmm. able to talk that talk mm -hmm. like a, a big a big mm -hmm. pastor, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's like, and with this virtual world going in, now I could just watch him on TV. Right. I don't really have to come to to your Facts. church because you don't really got the influence he got. You don't yeah. really got the words. How, he, you yeah. can't really say the now words. How he can, the mega churches. Right, right. Whereas though back in the day, you had to go to that church your that was on the church. corner, right? Yep. Yep. And it, it's, it's just crazy that... It's a lot. It's a lot. Yo. It's a lot. and I, Which is why I think it's very important that right now if you are seeking God you need to seek God's word mm, because that's facts. what he said yo let you me know? ask you this then if that's what you're doing like you know if that's what you believe it's not like what you should or shouldn't do but if that's what you believe you let know? me ask you this you go you don't like it do you think hypothetically if you so go so if I went to the church like and it, I didn't like it do you think you could even date somebody who doesn't uh, believe in the same thing you believe in? How? Whew. So I actually thought about that multiple times. Mm. Um, I was like, dang, like, what if, like, you know, because obviously I, was, I started going to church after you, and my process is still a little slower than yours because, you know, I was in a stop in. I was pregnant. Like, it was just a lot. So I didn't go as much as you. I also didn't get a, as many teachings as you did, and, right? Um, and obviously there's a process and you want to get baptized. It's, you know, it's a whole situation. So my process is a little slower than yours. And I was like, but what if I did just didn't, you know, wasn't something told me not to do it, whatever, whatever. And how would that work? So I don't fully have the answer to that yet. And I'm going to be honest with you. However, I did say that in my head, not that this was a thought of mine. I would just, I thought about it. Like how would I act or how would I react to this? I would definitely have an honest conversation about how I was feeling, but I don't know. I don't think I, I. I feel like for one household, I don't. I don't think you can be split. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Yeah, like you kind of have to like pick. You know mm. what I mean? And I don't know. And and honestly, like, why would you kind of want to date somebody with different beliefs with than you anyway? Mm. Like to be honest, I feel like people are so shallow. Though. You see, you see it so much. Again, like that's I like, sound like an old head. I keep talking about social media, but like people like nowadays niggas are shallow and hoes. Yeah. I'm sorry. We talking about God, I'm but. Screaming. 
These he knows your heart. Yeah, he knows my heart. Like these people who are shallow. What happened is a nigga see a little fine little thing, you know what I'm saying? Fat butt, nice jaw. She got, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, man, I'm a rock with her. The whole time you get with her, she a bum. She don't got nothing going on. She atheist and all this. And you like, you know what? Man, I could, I could work I, through I could it. Work. I, could get, I, I, I could deal with an atheist. You niggas is retarded. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> like so. You, Man. Yeah, I can never deal with no ideas. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I just don't think it works. Like, and because it, it, it comes down to other things. Like, okay, eventually you say you guys have children. Mm. How are we gonna raise the kids? Like, honestly, like, are we gonna be? What are we gonna do with? Like, are we celebrating this? When I said that's why you know, um, that was a big part I, of yeah, it. Yeah, like, um, you know, like when Muslims marry, like Christians marry Muslims, and now they, like, now they splitting the kids, having Christmas time. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, you, I I think, I think. Parenting and religious beliefs have to align mm. in households. Mm. Like you guys have to agree on a parenting style. Not you guys, but us as a whole. Agree on parenting style and agree on religious beliefs and finances. Mm, finances for sure. So I think those three are things that kind of have to align in anyone's household for it to fully work to some capacity. Mm. Because if we have all these different views of what you think you should do with the money, I think we should do with the money. What you should do with the kids, I should do with the kids. What you should do, with, we for, we going It's the house is divided. It's it's divided. Fact. Somebody yeah. asked me uh, not too long ago, like, yo, if uh, what if um you wanted to do something, or I don't know, allow Amaya to do something, but uh, Shade didn't. Something like that. Like, well, there's gonna be disagreements on certain things, but I think overall parenting styles, yeah. like you know, what I'm trying to shit align to some degree. So, like for example, um, I don't really, I never really like, I'm like, I don't really beat my kids. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not that I haven't popped on my ass like when she was little, like when she was. But me and I'll be trying. Yeah, right. <laughs> but say you you agreed on beating kids and mm. I didn't I think that's important mm. we have to agree like what type of parents are we doing nah, fact. you know what I'm trying to say because like if I'm not beating Alani and every time I turn around she doing something you beating her she's going to be confused definitely so I think something like that has to be like something like that but I'm not talking about like if you think she should go to the, the homecoming dance and I don't I think that's something we could talk about. Like, mm. why? Why you think she should go? All right, what if we? All right, what if we let her go and pick her up at nine thirty? Mm. I think that's a compromisable situation. But when it comes to what's that? Like, I don't know. Like, even like whether it's beating kids or, um, you know, just disciplining them yeah, in discipline general. general. Like, I should not beating. I'm sorry. I, you know, clearly I'm traumatized because I got my ass whooped. But <laughs> I mean, like, um, just discipline in general. Like, because you know, like even when we've had conversations about Amaya. You know, like, you know me, I'm a talker. Like, I want to talk her through it. Like, what what, what position, like, what, why, what, where, let's talk about it. You know what I mean? So, and we've talked about, like, how we view and, you know, communicate with, you know, Amaya. So, stuff like that. But no, not fine. like, uh, certain things can be compromised or mm. talked about. Like, I'm like, you might tell me, this is why you don't want her to go. I'm like, all right, but that's fair. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, stuff like that. So. No, you're right. Because even, yeah. like, going back to the church thing, coming back saying, yo, I mean, I ain't say we not celebrating. Oh, yeah. But, I mean... Yeah, because with the church, we, there's certain holidays we wouldn't be... But it makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's definitely a topic for... We would have to break it down. And I do feel... I feel like I do want to say that if anybody wants a little more insight on the... Yo, come rock with us. Yeah, come study, bro. Yeah, you come get a study. It, you can check it out. And I yeah. think that's a fair way without saying too much, but saying too much. If you really, if, if you're watching this and you want to know a little deeper, because some people get curious, like, well, what is it? Because, you know, a lot of times, like, people are still battling what they should believe in, what they shouldn't believe in, which way they should go. And they still believe in God. Because mm. I was I've always believed in God. Yeah, I we grew still up believe in God. We believe in God. Jesus. Like, I don't play about that. For sure. It's Christianity, um, for sure. I did struggle, though, with ways that I viewed certain things, though. Mm. Like, because it, it was due to the different churches I've been to. Right. You know. Um, but even like, just yeah. like our generation in general, and I spoke about this before, I feel like a lot of times we um we use this I'm spiritual thing yeah. as a escape goal or right. as a uh, But do excuse. you believe in God? Right. right. Like, it's <laughs> like, like, I'm not really uh, religious. Religious. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. That's just, that's because it's convenient to you. Because yeah. what happened is everything, right? Like, mm -hmm. like 
when we talk about Christianity or anything that you're a part of has rules and boundaries, right? So when you say I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, that's your way to snake out of what you should and shouldn't be whatever doing. Because now it's like you're supposed to follow at, according to whatever exactly. principles you follow. Exactly. So yeah. yeah, people be Muslim like, but, but you know, I'm like, oh, I'm really religious, I'm, I'm spiritual, so I can eat bacon for real. Or I'm screaming. I just like that's people only do it when it's convenient. And that's and I was one of them once. So that's, hey, that's not gonna twist it. Like you Muslims, I wanna talk to y'all because <laughs> there's something about y'all that don't say right with some of me about you, some of y'all Muslims. Some, some of you on your dean, some of you not. Yeah, some y'all gotta pull it, y'all gotta pull your sisters and brothers up, together. Man. But yeah, um, not nah, facts. I, I was one of them people too. Like, yeah. man, I, I'm getting more. But spiritual, you know, I but. don't want to discredit because you know, spirit, being spiritual it has practices too. Depending on what's what practices. Well, depending on what sides of the spirit you believe in. Like, you know, what I'm saying like, and the, that's, that's the and devil. The, yeah, it is. But but that's my point. That's why you have to be sure of which one you know because mm. spirituality is a range. And it ain't, it is light and it's dark to it. You get what I'm trying to say? So it's up to you. And I think you should be sure of what you're practicing and what you Spirituality, you, wanna... you praying to ghosts and motherfucking, you, the that's spirits. The, you know, I don't do that. That's the, you know, but my point is, that's my point. Nah. Whatever you saying you spiritual, so I'm, I'm spiritual to, you need to still be following what you're spiritual nah, to. Facts. And those same, you know, rules or not rules or you know what Bible is commandments it's something that mm. you know depending on what you you know you're praising to that you follow yeah nah um yo for real though like we we definitely outside we inside we in the church with it yeah. yo come come we could do, yeah, if you we could know, do virtual just, studies too yeah come if, if you want to pick girl. a little brain you want to figure it out it's lit and that's for everybody even everybody in the room yeah. serious, for real. like, it's, it's, think- it's, it's, it's good word like that's why I said what I will say what I love about the church is I really we it's all bible it's mm, all, all bible. bible it's not sure. it's not Facts. a lot it's no motivational if you're looking for pep sometimes I'll be lying. Lying. I ain't gonna lie yeah, I'm, I, I know yeah. I might sound ignorant but nah, it's, it's sometimes I miss normal. the old like, they, be yeah. get, they be getting into it. They, yeah. some, some preachers really get in that bag. Yeah, I love it's a couple preachers for this day. <laughs> they get in that I love. bag. But when it comes down to it I think the older I get and the yearn to want my family and my household to God be said. protected, Facts. I want to know what God Facts. said. Facts. And they definitely, directly. And this like, church is me. definitely talking about what, is what God, God said. said. And what no, he said to do. Yeah, it ain't yeah. no if ands. It ain't no their yeah. assumptions there. It's yeah. strictly out the Bible. Go to Old Testament, New Testament, mm-hmm. NIV. Literally mm-hmm. like, then that's that's dope. So and like, I think that's dope. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, so I mean, yeah, but yeah, no, I, you know, I'm proud of us, you know, because we are, like I said, we're not young, but we're not old. You know mm. what I'm saying? We definitely dig heavy in, just trying to do the right things, um, you know, especially for our family and being right with God. You know what I'm saying to protect our family completely. So I think that's fun I think that's all. a great way to end yeah. episode what eighty eighty one. Okay, uh-uh. <laughs> eighty episode what? eighty. This is eighty one. This is eighty one. Ah, wow, come on, that's man! Crazy, <laughs> yo, yo! If you want to uh, come study with us, man, hit us up. Um, yes, sir. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Ring that bell. Ring that bell so you can know when we drop in every single week. Yo, we three episodes in, babe. Three episodes. Congratulations yeah. for being um three consistent. weeks consistent. Thank you, gang, gang. Thank you. Yo, I'm tired. Tell them what a father with everything. She dot Shade. Follow me. Yeah, go. Leave five star ratings on the audio on yeah. Spotify and Apple. Music. Yeah, gang. Yeah, go to that. <laughs> yo, listen. Go to that Apple Podcast, that, that Spotify, wherever you listen to your audio. Listen, this. You know them YouTube people. This is way more important than the, the YouTube. Subscribe for for sure. Subscribe. You know what I'm saying? But, but go leave a rating. Go to the audio. Leave a rating. Listen on audio. Listen on audio. Listen on audio. Listen on audio. We Yo, thank you. Follow me at Mr. Underscore J Hill. M R Underscore J A Y. Gemini Scorpio Podcast Episode Eighty One. Yo, we, we got more merch on the way too. Per more merch on the way. More merch is on the way. All right. <laughs>